Greetings, unsettled souls. Welcome to the Correct Views. Sam I beat again. You doing political commentary for the media speaks. I don't even really know if there is a media speaks anymore. It might just be me speaking, but uh, I'm here. Hello, everyone. I promised you a show and a show you are going to get. As you can tell by the hair, I am uh, windblown. I have gone to Cedar Point today. I have been on water rides and you name it. It's been amazing, but that's not what you want to hear about. You want to hear about the idiots. And I want to go to bed, so I'm going to go ahead and kind of zip through these for you. You're going to get to see the dunce cap. You're going to get to see the printout, all of it. And uh, we're going to get right into it. I want to tell you before we start that Cristel and I are st call starting something called Melatonin Mondays. Now, these may post on Monday morning. These may post on Tuesday morning by the time they post. But Melatonin Mondays is exactly what it sounds like. It's going to be chill out. It's going to be fun. We're trying to find things to give you. When you call in, comment in, do something, what do you say? Uh, do me a favor, hit share on this, and I'll give you the word of the day early. Uh, two words of the day, Melatonin Monday. Put that in the comment line, and we'll make sure we send you something uh, as long as we, you give us an address. Uh, check this out, friends. USA Today, starting it off. Rosie O'Donnell, no surprise there. Sparks outrage with the Trump killing game. Now, see, I, I, I'm, I'm somebody that's got a pretty crass sense of humor. I really do. But if you're going to do something like the Trump killing game and you don't mention its parody, then that's a threat. And at her level of popularity, she should know that. But let's face it. She hasn't done anything since Greece that anybody remembers. And Rizzo was just the slut of the movie anyway. Let's face you, you know as well as I do. Rizzo was the slut of that play. Um, actress Rosie O'Donnell certainly knows how to push conservatives' buttons, and now she is drawing their ire by pushing her own button, one that makes President Trump jump off of a cliff. The push Trump off of a cliff again, O'Donnell tweeted Saturday in an apparent play on Trump's Make America Great Again slogan. Uh, the tweet links the game in which a player, as O'Donnell says, make the president jump off a cliff again and again. Of course, conservatives express outrage. Sean Hannity said it's gross and sick. Sadly, violence has become an acceptance form, acceptable form of dissent for liberals these days, said a uh, post on Young Conservatives. Look, I don't really have a problem with parody, even crass parody. Uh, I'll be honest, um, when Jaws of Victory was around, I would adorn myself in a... Bill Clinton mask, and we had an electric chair with lights and stuff and fog, and uh, I was electrocuted in it on stage in theater. Um, do I think that he should be given the electric chair? Yes, I do. I do, specifically for China Gate. I don't really care that much about Monica Lewinsky. Um, yeah, I do. I don't think anybody should take it into their own hands to do it. I'm not threatening to do it. I don't have a problem with it. Um, Skinny Puppy, when I went to see them once, they decapitated George W. Bush on stage in ISIS masks. Theater. Okay, I'm sure they didn't like the man, but theater. This is different because they're promoting this idea that it's okay to threaten to kill the president, which you may be in favor of if uh, you don't like Trump, but you're not going to like it very much when your guy's in office. So remember that. Leading off here at the Dunce Cap of the Month Award. Uh, we've got, uh, we got another two to get to before we get to the big dum -dee here. Florida girl dies month after drinking boiling water through a straw. Kia Ree, Pope 8 of Baton Beach, Florida, has died of her injuries following her young cousin's dare to drink boiling water through a straw. Now, I, I understand. I'm giving the dunce here to, to the cousin. But even at eight years old, I knew not to drink boiling water through a straw. And maybe I was a genius kid or something. I don't know. But a young Boynton Beach girl died on Monday following complications after her cousin dared her to drink boiling water through a straw. I told you it was the Dunce Cap of the Month Award. Eight-year-old Kyria Pre-Pope had previously burned her throat and mouth <coughs> with boiling water following the dare from a cousin who was reportedly the same age as her. 
Marquita Williams, 32, another cousin of the girl, recalled the scalding incident in an interview with the Sun Sentinel, saying it has been difficult to deal with. That's because your family is full of idiots. That has to be very difficult. She said no one told her it was boiling water that Kari Ari drank, and she believed it was hot water from the faucet. She said she gave Pope a drink of cold water, and the little girl and her cousin went to bed. But Ari woke up crying sometime later, saying it burned. The child suffered, suffered serious medical problems in the months following the dare. Four months after the dare, Pope received, it says, a tracheotomy. That sucks. That's when they put a hole in your throat which reportedly led to her suffering chronic respiratory problems and she was unable to speak. Now, that makes me wonder if the dunce cap also shouldn't be uh, mentioned here as a uh, possibility for the doctor because it's not very often that a tracheotomy results in somebody's death. Um, that's, that's, that's actually really weird. Going on here, on Sunday, the little girl complained that she was experiencing difficulty breathing. According to Pope's mother and mother's boyfriend, she became unconscious and responsive minutes later. Paramedics tried for 40 minutes to resuscitate Pope before rushing her to the local hospital where the child was pronounced dead in the early morning hours of Monday. The family is under investigation. How about the cousin? I don't, don't see where anybody else needs to be under investigation. The mother probably didn't think her daughter was that stupid. Uh, Pope's death is under investigation by the Department of Children of Families, and there have been a series of 11 cases involving the family dating back to 2009. Mm. I don't really trust Child Protective Services either, so let's make that clear, but that seems like an awful high number of complaints, even for someone who doesn't trust CPS. Five of which involved domestic violence between Kerry's mother and her boyfriend. Uh, Mike Carroll, the secretary of DFC, said in a statement, that the loss of a child is a devastating is devastating and sent the condolences to the family and loved ones. He went on to say that there's an investigation to the child's death has been linked into. Look, some idiot dared her to drink uh, boiling water. She did it. She died. There's not much of an investigation you need here. There's a cousin that you may or may not want to prosecute. And there's an eight-year-old girl that grew up in a family that obviously didn't teach her to be smart enough not to drink boiling water. There's a GoFundMe page set up. Uh, her cousin Dave dared her to drink boiling water on YouTube, or blah, blah, blah. You guys. All right, friends, I might have given her the dunce cap if I'd have known where to send it, but I it would have been a, I'm sure I could have found it if I'd have looked long enough. But your winner, trust me, it's worth it. I just want to say real quick you notice I'm not home, right? I'm not in my studio, right? That's because I'm at the Seacrest Motel. Love the place. If you're going to come to Bear Creek for hollow weekends, Please do. You will find uh, up here at Sandusky, the rooms are outrageously priced. I've been looking at them nonstop. Now, you're going to want to get up here maybe a little bit before holler weekends because they close for that. But I'm telling you now, as long as the regular season on Cedar Point is open, you want to make sure you head to the Seacrest Motel while I am at and tell Nick or Vicky that you heard about it from the correct views and you'll be getting a special price just because you're a listener of the show because they're cool like that. All right, friends, that brings us to what you are waiting for. Listen to the music. Wait for it. Oh, yes, the Dunce Cap of the Month Award, of course, brought to you by the Seacrest Motel. And friends, this one is really interesting. How many of you realize that Dunkirk was one of the most important battles in U.S. history? It is something that we did as Americans. Not black America, not white America, not Asian, Indian, or any other America. America defeated, helped defeat those problems. And it's a news flash, friends. I'll tell you this. It's ridiculous to try to make a racial issue out of Dunkirk. But that's what has happened here. Daily Mail bringing us the uh, dunce cap of the month here. Listen to this. Too many whites at Dunkirk. Never mind that we defeated great evil. Let's worry about what color we were. Christopher Nolan's Dunkirk is receiving widespread praise as one of the greatest war movies of all time, and not everyone has been so thrilled with the movie, however, and not for reasons related to its filmmaking. Over the weekend, Marie Claire, who won the Dunce Cap of the Month Award, it's a magazine, I never heard of it either, argued Nolan's latest celebra uh, celebra uh, celebrates men too much. Dunkirk felt like an excuse for men to celebrate maleness, 
which apparently they don't get enough of, reviewer Mahara Bonner asserted in the article. Now, I hate to be the one to tell this idiot this, but men won the Battle of Dunkirk. If you don't like it, then watch The Notebook and take this opportunity to shut the hell up. How about that? Over the weekend, uh, again, complained about it. Dun um, if Nolan's entire purpose is breaking the established war movie mold and doing something different, why not make a movie about women in World War II? Because women in World War II were putting rivets in steel uh, machines for people to win the war with. And while that is extremely important, and Lord knows that without the, uh, the, the rivet heads that were the women in World War II, we wouldn't have ever won it. It just isn't the same movie, you dolt. Hey, Christelle, would you like to watch a movie about somebody riveting or somebody shooting? Shooting. No, oh, God, she's a terrible woman. Um, you know, you're not much womanly, I'm telling you. Uh, because I know really? that... Last time I checked, I, I was female. Uh, My we, birth certificate says female. We could prove that on camera because she is standing here nude in the hotel room, but I think I probably won't get to monetize Keep it. Keep PG-13. Alright, we'll show you just one nipple. It says, because I know it were illicit cries of, ugh, not everything has to be about feminism. How about any other marginalized group, Bonner responded. These stories shouldn't be regulated to hide indie films of Oscar season. It's up to giant powerhouse directors like Nolan to tell them, which is why drunk cook feels so basic. So because there weren't a lot of black people in the Battle of Dunkirk, and the director didn't just put some in to be politically correct, and therefore the director is bad. Predictability, a, predictably, a snarky review of the film celebrating men getting shot, drowned, and burned alive on behalf of their country struck many people as totally idiotic. But it fit with the growing chorus of complaints that the historical film was not diverse enough. For instance, USA Today bemoaned the lack of women and lead actors of color in its glowing review of Dunkirk. I really don't give a damn what color somebody is in a movie. I really don't. If you are black and in a movie, I let me be the first to tell you I don't give a damn. Okay? I only care whether or not you did a good job in the movie. I really don't care. And if there were 50,000 white people on the beach, then I expect the movie to show me 50,000 white people. Just like if they're making a movie about how the original people of Africa uh, started growing things in the desert, which they were the first to do, obviously, because that's where they live, then I don't expect to see a lot of white people in it. Yeah, I don't think you should be putting white people in a movie about slavery just so that you can add a white person. Because it's not going to make any damn sense. Because it was black, okay? If there were white people that won the freaking war, then it was white people that won the freaking war. And that's why you win the dunce cap of the month. And if you don't like it, I'm right, you're wrong, and that's all that matters. Look at this real quick. I'm so tired of this crap. Look at this, friends. This is what they're winning. Here's, first of all, the award. Now, that is the Marie Claire in the logo in the back. I didn't really know. It's hard to do one with this. Their logo kind of sucks, just like their magazine. Check this out. I'll show you the hat in a minute. The Dunce Cap of the Month Award. I wrote this Dunce Cap of the Month Award goes to Marie Claire, who've managed to miss the point of Dunkirk and instead have dwelt upon the race of the actors. The PC diversity that you seek may not have been in the battle that day, but what was done remains a blessing to us still. For failing to see that, you win the Dunce Cap of the Month Award. Christelle did not spell check this very well, so now she gets to add an L to still. And here is the Dunce Cap that they are winning. First of all, there's the great big dunce. We used to saw that yesterday in the hint. Now there's a, an anti-Nazi logo. And no, it doesn't mean Antifa, I hate them too. It says, uh, does it matter what American race stops such evil? It's different evil, but you know what I mean. Why isn't it enough that Americans did it? And then, of course, there's uh, the Greek leader himself. That's a joke. White Americans kicked my ass. Black Americans kicked my ass. Indian Americans kicked my ass. Asian Americans kicked my ass. Dot, dot, dot. In other words, let the correct views say we don't care about political correctness. We don't care about color. Just make a movie that doesn't suck. And with Nickelback making awful white music and Drake making awful black music, I'm not sure that either race is doing a very good job at all. Friends, you've listened to The Correct Views. Thank you for listening. Please donate at thecorrectviews at hotmail.com. You can do, this, do so through PayPal. I am going to wash this, this, this horrible hair and go to bed, and I will see you sometime next week, maybe for Melatonin Mondays. Good night, friends. God bless.